Good morning. Good morning. Lovely to see you, Lighthouse family. Oh, I've been missing you all week. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Absolutely. Uh, you could be in the park today. Yay, get, freedom. Get to escape a little bit. Our yeah. first freedom. Yay. Enjoying some sun on the beach. Maybe. maybe yeah. yeah, maybe in you made it to the or, beach. If yeah. it's in your 50Ks, don't go out of your 50Ks. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Maybe you're like the Atoga oh, family. Yeah, do you know the Atoga family? They get dressed, they do their makeup, they wear their Sunday best, they sit on the couch or they even stand up and sing and sing clap and, 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 and they are right into this is their church and they treat it seriously and they're right into it good on your Otoga family right whichever kind of family you are however yeah. you find yourself that's right welcome Enjoy it. wherever you are lovely to have you with us some might be having a late breakfast with friends welcome it's good to be with you hey i just want to share a scripture from the book of revelation chapter 4 and verse 11 you are worthy our Lord and God to receive glory and honour and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. Amen. Wow. God willed you into being. He willed you into this existence and in this moment. And so let's just come together and give him all of the glory, all of Amen. the honor, because he is so worthy. Let's just lift the lid off the yeah. house, Ruth, today, Lord. Sing out loud. As we worship yeah. the Lord today, Ruth. Enjoy right? the worship Amen. service today. Just worship Jesus with all of your heart. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever.
shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.
We just thank you for your blessing, God, that you, it makes yes, rich and adds no sorrow. Lord, yes, we just pray Jesus. today for our families. Yes, Lord. God, that you would just put your blessing all over our, every family, God. We just thank you. Yes, Jesus. Uh, You're God, a good that God. our children are so important to us. And so, Lord, we thank you, your favor, your blessing, your love, your yes, grace, Jesus. your mercy, God. We just yes, Lord. want it all, Lord. We just want to be so consumed by you and your presence. God, and we just thank you for your blessing yes, being upon each and every one. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Girls, that was great. Wow. Did you love Wasn't our that girls? Good? They're always Didn't they good. do amazing? I so sure love that song. God, you are good and your mercies endure forever. He is such a good, good God. And Absolutely. oh, how can you go past the blessing? Oh, the blessing. It's, it's great, amazing. Great song. God's legacy and heritage for all of our kids. It's absolutely amazing. Well, coming up after today's service, I want to let you know that at 11 o'clock, we're having a Zoom call. So if you've never actually Zoom. met Ron and I in Zoom, Zoom. person, We'd love you to join us at 11 o'clock at the end of the service. We'd love to just get to know you. Let's touch base, have a bit of a chat, and we'd we'd really, really love to get to know you. So if, please join us at 11 o'clock. We're going to be just um, having a great little chat and conversation, yeah. and we'd like to know about you and your family, and and where you're from, and how you how we can connect. Awesome. And so um, we're just going to come around the communion table today. And, you know, I was just reflecting, you know, on, on the fact that God will supply all of our needs. You know, He is such a I good know. God, he doesn't amazing. He? As we said at the start, He breathed us into existence and He just never... He, he just is always there to provide everything that we need. He doesn't leave us on our own, but He is there to take care of us on all of the journey. Sometimes we think we have to work everything out on our own, but He says, no, come back to me. Yeah. Come back to me. I am your source. I'm everything you, you need. And Philippians 4 verse 19 says, my God shall supply wow. all your needs yes, according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And I love how Paul was saying, he, Paul wrote that, that um, scripture in the book of Philippians and Paul said, my God shall supply all of your yeah. needs. Amen. Wow. And so he just had this heart to let people know that his God was going to supply their needs. And Ron and I are just saying that today. And I want you to say that to your families, your unsaved friends. My God will supply all of your needs in this season, whatever we're facing. We know as the body of Christ that our God is strong and powerful yes. and he will supply your your needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus. And so our greatest need as human beings was for salvation. And so as we come to the table today, let's remember that our greatest need was salvation yeah. and Jesus gave everything. He gave everything that he had, every fiber of his being. He gave everything to supply our need to be reconnected to our Father who is crazy, head over heels in love with us. He is a great God, Ron. He really is. is. So let's just pray as we come to the table. Father, we just thank you that your provision is in this table right now, Lord. Mm. Your provision, it's a bread of a table of provision. You provided when we couldn't provide for ourselves, Lord. You provided all of our needs. You provided for everything. And so, Father, right now, we take the bread, Father, and we just speak your blessing and favour over every situation, over our extended fa families, Father, that don't even know you yet. We're just believing in this moment, Father, that you are providing our God will mm. provide your need and we speak it over them now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's eat together Amen. in Amen. Jesus' name. Thank you. And then let's just take the cup, the cup that represents this blood that was shared for us. And in Jesus' name we partake now of this cup knowing that you will supply everything. You've already supplied the most important stuff and everything else is easy as we look to you and we partake yes, of your supernatural strength knowing that we can trust you for all of it. Yes, we in can. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank Lord, we you, thank Lord. you. Yeah, great communion. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. Um, and now we come to our giving. I just uh, want to thank you all for, for um, your generosity mm. and how you help um, provide for the needs mm. uh, that we have when we have many of them. 
So uh, appreciate your giving. Mm. And, um, you know, as a church, we are impacting our community so much. There is so much going on. Um, and your giving today goes mm. towards that to help mm. us to continue to get the Word of God out, to get the gospel out mm. and to help families in need. So, Yeah, and I was just going to talk about that mm. for a second, Ron, because, mm. you know, the last few days during the week, you know, we've had our police in here, not just even our local police now, but we've got um, the South Brisbane units have wow. been down in here wow. and um, they've been down to get collect food for the families that are struggling. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Do you know, and, and we just always step up and say, we'll do it. Yep. Because we know that our church family is dedicated to meeting the needs of our community. So we just say, yep, you've got families that are struggling, Lighthouse will meet the need. That's and every single you. one of you, we need that support in this season because we're yeah. stepping out on the water and there's so much need, but we just believe in God that we're going to meet that need together, which is just wonderful. It Amen. It is just wonderful. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we do thank yes, you. Jesus. That, first of all, that we're one of your kids and you yes, love Lord. us and you gave yourself for us, Lord. You set the example of giving and so Lord, yes, we, Lord. we want to give so that others can um, find you and yes, know about Jesus. you and Hallelujah. be helped uh, by this church and Lord we yes, pray Lord. God your blessing on our giving we pray you'll bless it you'll multiply it yes, you'll expand Jesus. it God and it'll reach uh, further and stretch further yes, so Lord. Lord we just pray you'll bless those who give and that which is given God and you'll bless back yes, uh, Jesus. so that we can partner in, in a greater way in a bigger way and have a bigger impact. So we give you thanks. Yes, Jesus. And we give you praise for that in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. All for his name to be glorified, right? Well, that's right. There's that's nothing right. else. Yeah, we want the yeah, name of Jesus else. lifted up. Well, I'm very, very excited now, Ron, because mm. you're going to share the word oh, of God wow. with us. Okay. I'm so, so excited because I believe that it's a word that's going to encourage you. You know, this is no, this doesn't shock God, this journey we're on. No. He knows exactly where we are and he's just the got it all in, sorted. Yeah. Mm. And his miracle working power has gone before us. And excited to hear you unfold all of that to us. After Amen. This video. Amen. Over 4 million Australians face food insecurity each year. What does this mean? It means everyday families, your neighbours, or co workers could be struggling to make ends meet. That's where we come in. In 2004, we saw the need our community was facing and started delivering bread door to door from the back of an old van. Today, we are reaching over half a million people every year through our grocery stores, community programs, wholesale, and our free trolley initiative, which has supported thousands of struggling families with good, healthy, fresh food and groceries, bringing hope and helping get through their tough situations. Lighthouse Care is a place where anyone can come in, regardless of their cultural background, appearance, or financial status, and be treated equally with dignity, respect, and get some desperately needed help. Please partner with us as we continue to be a shoulder to lean on when people need it the most. Well, good morning, church. Trust you're um, enjoying the services that we've had. Last week was awesome. And um, just want to uh, just believe God and open in prayer this morning. Father, we do thank you for your presence being with us today. Wherever we are in our homes, God, wherever we are today, God, we just pray that we'll sense your love your grace, your presence working in our lives. Lord, we thank you that you love us, you care about, about us, and Lord, and you're moving in our hearts and lives. We give you thanks. We give you praise in Jesus' name. We're all still social distancing. How's that going? We're all keeping the 1.5. You know, I need to social distance from the refrigerator so I can flatten my curve. I don't know how you're going. Hopefully uh, you're working on that one as well. But today, I, I want to talk to us a little bit today. You know, there's three main feasts. Three main feasts that the Lord uh, asks us or commands us to keep. And one of them's Passover. The next one's Pentecost. And the one after that is Tabernacles. And so we've just celebrated Easter. And Easter was a wonderful time. Uh, good services. And it's really interesting how in the time of Israel, when they were in Egypt, that they were actually in isolation. They were in their homes with the blood of, of the lamb on the doors on the doorposts and the lintels, and they were behind and the death angel passed over and they were safe. And so interesting that the world was in a global uh, quarantine, a global isolation uh, during Easter. And straight as we came out of Easter, we saw uh, numbers drop, nowhere near the model that they predicted and, and the numbers of cases have considerably dropped. And so we're in a shaking time. We're in a time now. Pentecost is coming. You know, Pentecost means 50. It's 50 days from Passover to Pentecost. And I'm 
excited about what God's doing because if you have a look at when Jesus came and He died on the cross and He gave Himself for us, that 50 days after that, they were in the upper room and the Holy Spirit was given and there was a mighty rushing wind and there was an outpouring of God that was so powerful that came on the church that they moved in the power of God in such a way that they'd never done before. And I believe that we are moving into our Pentecost this time after Passover, that God is doing something in the preparation of our hearts, getting us ready to move into Pentecost. And I'm excited about that. I'm when I heard this and I saw this, man, I, my spirit just leapt within me and I was so excited to know what God is about to do coming up. There's going to come such a presence of God on the church. If we will spend time, if we will turn off our fortnight, turn off the, uh, the television and just spend some time with God, get a bit of time alone with God and connect with Him, that we're going to see coming up as they waited in that upper room, as they waited on God for the Holy Ghost to be given, the presence of God came. And just with a rushing mighty wind, the Spirit of God was poured out. Tongues of fire was so powerful. So I'm excited about what God's going to do. And I believe that as we just suffer, um, just celebrated Passover, not suffered, it is suffering for Jesus. It was terrible for Him. And as we've celebrated that feast of Passover and applied the blood to our doorposts, I believe that God is about to bring us into a time of departure, leaving Egypt for the promised land, and leaving the old and moving into the new. Are you excited about that? I believe that's what happened with, uh, and you know in the word that as soon as Passover was over, they, they left Egypt. They took the spoil of Egypt. They took the fortunes of Egypt, loaded up, and they left Egypt. Man, that's coming on the church. You know, and Paul writes here in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 11, it says this. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down. Uh, for our instruction on whom the ends of the ages are coming. So we're at the end of the age. This is definitely the closest generation to the end of the age, and we're here. And these things that happened to Israel, that happened in Egypt, it talks about um, coming out of Egypt. If you read the whole chapter, it talks about them coming out of Egypt. And what's exciting is that these things were written for us as a lesson for us to learn from, and we can look back on these stories and these examples for us to learn from. So we're going to look a little bit at some of that today. And I believe that this is a moving day, that this is the day for us to cross over. And, you know, um, it's really interesting. When the plagues happened in, in uh, Egypt, and Israel was in a place called Goshen. And in this place of Goshen was where the people of God were. And so when the 10 plagues came, they happened in Egypt, but so many times... Nothing was happening to them in Goshen. Isn't that a wonderful promise that we can look and see where the flies came? And it said there were so many flies in Egypt, in the Egyptians' houses that they're on the floor and everywhere, but they weren't in Goshen. And so many of the plagues in the last, and one of them was where there was darkness for three days, hit, hit that area and that region. But you know what it said? That there was light in Goshen. That's just a wonderful Thing, Even though there was darkness happening everywhere else and it says they were stumbling around, they couldn't even see uh, to walk around. But in Goshen, there was light. And so we're moving now out of that and seeing God do such an amazing thing in the protection of His people in Egypt. And they're coming out now. They come out of Egypt. They're ready now to cross Jordan. They have the spoils of Egypt and they're about to move out of, of uh, and into the, into the wilderness and into the promised land that God has promised to take them. So this morning, I just want to look at another verse in Revelation 18, verse 4. It says, Come out of her, come out of the midst of her, my people. And this is speaking of Babylon. And Babylon to us is speaking to us of the world system. And I believe that God is calling us to come out of the world system, coming out of. Um, this, this, this world which is, has troubles, it has problems, it has corruption, it has sorrow and it has so much pain. And Jesus said, in the world you'll have tri tribulation, but don't worry, for I have overcome the world. Don't worry. Isn't that great? Jesus says, don't worry. In the world there's tribulation, there's going to be problems. But don't worry, because I have overcome the world. And that's found in John 16, 33. Get that one, get a tattoo or that one, that's a good one. So you are in the world, but you are not of this world. This is not our world. We're just passing through. This isn't it for us. There is an eternity. There is a place called heaven 
that we're yet to possess. And that I'm looking forward to that. You know, in Revelation, God said, come out of her. Come out of the system of its corruptions, of its troubles, of its mindsets. Um, Because you're not of that. We are crossing over into a new era. Um, You know, that, that prayer that says, Jesus said to pray on earth as it is in heaven. And I believe that in our days, we're going to see on earth as it is in heaven. We're going to see God move powerfully. You're going to find um, new strength physically. You're going to find health and wholeness. You're going to find provisional abundance that God is going to bring into your life. And I'm looking forward to that so much. And you're thinking, haven't you heard the news? The economies of the world are crashing. People are out of work. People are sick. Yes, I know that. But Jesus is greater than than all of that. You know, when Israel came out of Egypt, they came out with all the spoils, the gold, the silver, the spices. They didn't leave rich. I mean, didn't leave poor. They left rich. And not only that, they didn't leave sick. It says there was not one feeble amongst them, no sickness amongst them. And they had been in in slavery for 400 years and not one of them was sick. Isn't that an amazing promise? You know, I've been through hard times personally where God has met me financially. You know, I didn't have a brass razoo. I didn't have two one cent pieces to even rub together. But God met me at the point of my need. Not only does God provide for me and my family, but He's also providing for 500,000 people every year that use the service of Lighthouse Care. You know, God can take you from your need and He can take you to your abundance. And I believe this is what we're moving into. We're going to move into that in such a more powerful way. And you know, I've seen it. I've lived it. I'm living it. And I love it. And that's what God can do for a life laid down for Him. He is going to cause you to win every battle. Come on, church, that's so exciting. He's going to cause you to win every battle. The battles you're facing now, God is going to cause you to cross over into your victory. Wow, that's powerful. And to know deliverance from the enemy. A time when you are going to experience favor like never before. Man, I'm up for some of that. How about you? Come on, church, it's time to cross over. And it is not dependent on the circumstances um, that are surrounding us. You know, Exodus 13, 17 to 22, this was a time when the children of Israel were in bondage, in slavery in Egypt. They were being cruelly dealt with. They were being whipped. They were being beaten. They had to work for nothing. And God took them and had them released. And God led them out of Egypt and to the Red Sea. You know, Exodus 14, 1 to 9, you know, is this passage of Scripture. It's very interesting. Pharaoh wakes up and he awakens and he realizes that these guys have left, that they're not coming back. And they have plundered us. They've taken our gold. They've taken our silver. They've taken our spices and our fine linens. And and they have plundered us and they're not coming back. So he decides, I better go after them. We're going after them. And so he begins to chase after them. Exodus 14.10 says, And when Pharaoh, Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, very afraid. And the children of Israel cried to the Lord. And so they were up against the Red Sea. They'd made it to the Red Sea. But now as they looked up and they turned, they could see that the Egyptian army was hotly pursuing them and they were angry. And they were coming after the children of Israel. You know, and it says that they were very afraid. But Moses said to the people, do not fear. That's a reminder for us today. Do not fear. Don't be afraid. Do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord. Man, that's powerful words. In other words, see what? Stand by and see God's intervention. God's going to intervene. Stand by and see what God will do. And God wants you to be in that position right now. Whatever you're facing, you know, whatever you're going through right now, wow, I can't wait to see what God is going to do in this season that we're in. Look to Him and behold the greatness of our Lord to act on your behalf. It says here, stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will uh, accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you've seen today, you will never see them again forever. I mean, that's powerful. You will never see them again. Things that have kept you bound, things that have plagued you in the past. 
You will never experience them again. You will now experience freedom and you will never see them again. Those things that have been chasing you in your past will not follow you into your tomorrow. Can you hear that? That is a good thing. They are not going to follow you into your tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be so good. The last day that you will see oppression on your health, your finance, your relationships, your life, in any way, you will not see it again. Wow. Because God is good. He is great. You know, it says in verse 14 that the Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the sons of Israel to go forward. As for you, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the seas and divide it. And the sons of Israel shall go through in the midst of the sea on dry land. I believe that this is our day. This is our time. God is raising us up to be deliver deliverers. God's wanting you to be a deliverer. God's wanting you to believe God, just like Moses believed God. It says in Exodus 14, 21 and 22, it says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the seas, and the Lord swept the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land. So the waters were divided. The sons of Israel went through in the midst of the sea on the dry land, and the waters were like a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. You know, it looked impossible for Israel to cross over. The, the sea was there. The Egyptians were coming. There was no way across, no way in the natural, nothing naturally uh, in any way could they do to cross. There was three million of them. There's no way they could cross that sea. And all of a sudden, God causes the east wind to blow and He rolls back the sea. He rolls it back and He makes it stand in a heap. And then He blows across the sand. So it causes the sand to dry out. And Israel walked across on dry land. What an amazing miracle. I want the, the video replay. I was talking to someone yesterday. We we're talking about this. And they said, man, I want to get the replay on that. I want to see that one in uh, high def, high definition. Exodus 14, 31 says this, When Israel saw the great power which the Lord had used against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and they believed, come on church, and they believed in the Lord and in His servant Moses. This is your crossing time. This is your time to cross over, to go forward in what God has for you. You know, and I believe there's six things. I've got six points here that um, are going to mean something to us as we get through them. It says this, unfamiliar. Number one, unfamiliar. It's new. We haven't been this way before. And it says in Isaiah 43, 18 to 19, it says, Do not call to mind the former things or ponder the past. Because we do that so well. You know, we, we ponder our past. We go over our past, our failures and everything that went wrong. God says, don't call them to mind. Behold, I will do a new thing. Um, I will do something new now and it will spring forth. Man, it's going to spring forth now. And you say, how can that possibly happen in the midst of everything that's going on? But God is saying, I will do a new thing. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness. This is cool. And rivers in the desert. God says, it's impossible, but I can do it. I am the God of the impossible. And the second one is trust in God. Trust in God. It's so, it's so important that we develop now just to trust God in the little things. And so when the big things come, it's going to be easy to trust God in the big things. You know, it's time to trust Him. It's time to trust Him for everything. You know, everything is falling apart and, and it's going to fail you. There is not going to be anything or anyone that we can rely on like God. You know, when the children of Israel went through the wilderness, He was everything that they needed. Um, they didn't have anything else. They had God. They had this great God who just delivered them and brought them out of Egypt and parted the seas and took them across and through the wilderness. And they, that's all that, you know, and it's like saying, wow, is that all I got? But they had this amazing God. And so He was everything that they needed. They had the gold, the silver and the spices, but there was no shopping malls. There was no Carl's Jr. or Taco Bell to spend their money at. There was nothing for them there uh, to use that money on or that gold and silver. But God was there. And so God provided for all of their needs. Everything that they needed, God provided for. So we need to keep our eyes on Jesus in this new season because what worked before might not work in this season. God is going to do a new thing. He's leading us into a new season 
Psalm 20 verse 7 says this, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I remember that when I first became a Christian, we used to sing that as a song. It was an awesome song. So we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Don't look to anything else. Just keep your eyes on Him. Jesus is all that you will ever need. He is all that you need in this new season. You know, in Deuteronomy 8, um, this is a great chapter in the Bible because this is God. He's preparing His people, the people of God, to actually enter the promised land after they had been in the wilderness for 40 years. He's preparing them to go into the promised land and He's telling them, you're going to go into the promised land and wow, it's going to be great. It's going to be a land flowing with milk and honey, grapes so big that two people need to carry them. I mean, that's a big bunch of grapes. Everything is going to be bigger, better and greater. And they are still in the wilderness. And it's like, wow, I can't even get my head around that. How do I understand that? But God keeps telling him, you're going to increase. You're going to be blessed. You're going to have more than you can imagine. But when this happens, be very careful not to forget me. Don't get your eyes off of me. I wanted you to have your eyes on me when things were bad, and you did. But even more so when things are going to get good and there are going to be tensions in the world. And have your eyes on me. Keep them on me when things get good. You know, there are difficult times. And yes, but God is going to bring us into a good land. Can you say amen? So we need to keep our eyes on God, completely on Him during these tough times. You know, completely on Him. But you also need to keep your eyes on Him when things get good. Is that right? Not just in the the bad times when we cry out to God and it seems to make us pray harder, doesn't it, when things go bad? But when things are good, sometimes we just seem to, uh, you know, things are good, God. See you tonight. See you tomorrow. But God is saying, don't forget about me even in the good times because we're going to come into a time of blessing and season that's going to be so amazing. The third point I've got is believe. We need to believe God. We need to believe Him. Get our belief system just trusting and believing in God. God is wanting you to draw aside. I believe it's it's important that this time we're in, we've got some spare time, that we spend time just waiting on God in His presence, just resting in Him, hearing His voice, listening to Him. What's He saying? And it's good to spend time just trying to hear what, what is God saying in this time. He has declared to them that He will deliver them by His mighty hand and bring them into the promised land and bring them out of Egypt. But they struggled to believe the promises. You know, things got uncomfortable in the wilderness. When they couldn't find anything to drink, they went into a panic. They lost sight of the promise right away. They still had the promise. The promise was still good. God didn't change His mind. He doesn't. When He gives a promise, man, it's for life. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says this, For all the promises of, of God are yes and amen in Him. How cool is that? You know, it's amen means so let it be. All the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, so let it be. It's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. He's saying all the promises in Jesus are a big yes, and they are, so let it be. Man, that's just, that's a good one right there. And so we need to hold on to those promises and don't let what's going on around you hold you back. To tell your mind that uh, it's something else. That's what's happening here in Israel. They saw God bring them out of Egypt by His mighty hand. They took the spoil of Egypt. They saw the Red Sea parted. They went across on dry land. Their enemy was swallowed up behind them by the sea. And they partied for three days and celebrated. And the moment that there was an appearance of a challenge, just an appearance of a channel challenge, because it was never a challenge to God, They say, there is no water here. It's bitter. What are we going to do? This is terrible. And they went right into negativity mode. Does that sound like anyone? Instead of saying, no, God is going to take us through. Our God is going to see us through. All good, God. He's going to take us into the land flowing with milk and honey. He's going to take care of us. They didn't do that. They lost sight of their promise. They lost sight of what God was doing. And sometimes we lose sight of what God's doing, but we keep our focus like Moses, keep focused on the hand of God. We have seen God do great things. 
And as soon as a problem comes, oh, well, it's me. I'm going to the garden and I'm going to eat some worms and I can't see how this is going to work out. Now, come on, believe God. Really believe God. Deep within you today, say, God, man, I'm going to believe you today like I never have. I'm going to trust you, God, like I never have. I'm going to see you move in my situation. He will. It's amazing. You know, my, my family got, had a promise uh, that our whole household will be saved. My dad's 92 years old, and at 92, I had the privilege of leading him to Christ. You know, it took a long time to get through, but God's promise never fails. No matter how long it takes, don't, don't ever give up. Um, God's word is faithful. His word and his promise is true, and it will come to pass. Such a privilege to see him come to know Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Number four, there will be challenges. Deuteronomy 20 verse 1, it says, When you go to battle against your enemies and you see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. It's interesting when he brought them out of the land of Egypt through the Red Sea and they crossed over, that the challenges didn't end with the crossing of the Red Sea. There was more challenges ahead. Um, But those challenges, listen to this, those challenges were supposed to invite them to see the miracle dimension of God. God was inviting them into seeing Him moving in miraculous power on their behalf. Man, I want to see that. I want to be a part of that. And I want to see that in greater measure. And just because you are crossing over doesn't mean you're not going to be without a battle and without an obstacle. Every single one of those challenges are intended to bring you into a great place of blessing if you believe Him. A great place of blessing. That's the intention of, of, of challenges and trials. That as we believe God for that and we see God answer that, man, what a blessing, what an excitement. Man, party for three days. So don't worry, don't be afraid. Just because uh, I bought them out of Egypt, I'm going to bring you through what's in front of you. Man, that's so exciting. You know, they didn't just stroll into the promised land and possess the land. No, the first place they came to was Jericho. Have you heard of Jericho? It was an extremely fortified city with massive walls. God calls Joshua and he says, come over here. I've got a plan. I want to talk to you about it. He said, I'm going to give you the city. He said, but this is how you're going to do it. You're going to march around it. You're going to shout out a few times. You're going to blow some trumpets. Wow, that, does that make sense? I don't know what, what Joshua thinks. That doesn't make sense. How does that wall come down with a bit of shouting and, and, and a blowing of trumpets and marching around? And Wow, that doesn't make sense. But what it does do, it connects us with what God told us to do. And when we're obedient to what God has said in His Word, man, His Word is going to come to pass. What He said will come to pass. They were able to take Jericho and they were able to conquer the land just as the Lord told them. Man, isn't that a great story? Man, that is just so powerful. And then after that, they had another one. The next city they tried to conquer was Ai. Do you know the story? Ai was an easy beat. It was an easy territory. It should have fallen easily just like that, but they didn't uh, win that battle. And why? Because a man called Achan disobeyed the Lord. He didn't do what God had said. And so that sin passed on the whole of Israel and they were unable to take the land. They were unable to to beat Ai at that time. But when they uh, dealt with that, they were able to come in later and take Ai and win that battle. So as we step out into a new season, you know, we don't want to miss what God has for us. Let's not allow temptations. Let's not allow fear and what the enemy would bring in our life. Let's stay believing, trusting in our God. Amen. Number five is courage. Courage. Courage is the power to face your fears. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you and He will not leave you. This is so good. He will not leave you. And He will not forsake you. You know, He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Man, God sticks closer than a, than, the, than a brother, the Bible says. He is the Lord mighty in battle. He is strong. He is the same God that rolled back the Red Sea for Israel. It's the same God that walks with you through every situation that you're in. You know, number six says, so our last point, it says, faith with action. You know, our faith always needs to have action. You know, it's one thing to say, I believe, but will you get in the boat? You know, like Blondin, where, he, where this man was amazing. He, he could push a wheelbarrow on a tightrope across the Niagara Falls. Man, wouldn't that be a frightening thing to do? 
And so he could do that. And he said, how many believe I could do that? And they, the crowd goes, yes, we believe. And he said, later on, he says, you know, he pushes the wheelbarrow back and forth and he says to the crowd, he says, okay, who's going to get in the wheelbarrow? That's another story, isn't it? I believe you can do it, but will I get in the wheelbarrow? And God wants action in our faith. God wants us to believe Him and believe Him to the point where we'll be moved in faith. You know, He said to Moses, stretch out your rod. You know, God could have said, step aside, Moses. I'll handle this. I'll take care of parting. He said, but Moses, stop crying out to me. Stretch out your rod across the sea. And as he stretched out his rod, God parted the seas. You know, I I believe so much that God wants us to co-labor with Him. He wants us to partner with Him to see these things and these promises come to pass. He's our Heavenly Father and we're His kids and He loves us so much and He calls us into that relationship with Him. And so we partner with God. I mean, what a privilege to partner with God, that God wants us to partner with Him in what He's doing on the earth. And so He he lives in us, man, and, and He wants us to live in Him. This is your time to cross over. This is um, into an even greater realm. Uh, of His goodness than you have ever walked in before, man. And I'm looking forward to that, man. I can't wait to see what God's about to do. Um, This is a time for you to walk out of bondage and into freedom. As Israel walked out of bondage and into the promised land, into the freedom that God had for them. This is a crossover day. This is your time to cross over. We may never do church as we used to. I don't know what's ahead, but man, we're ready for what God's got, whatever He wants to do. Things are changing. We don't even know what the future will look like. And you know what? I really don't care. As long as my eyes are on God, He's going to lead us. He's going to guide us. He's going to show us what we need to do. You know, God said that He will build His church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know, the gates of economic downturn, the gates of coronavirus, the gates of unemployment. Jesus said the gates of hell shall not, will not, no way, no how, never ever will prevail against it. Amen. We don't know totally what the details of the future are, but we know one thing for sure. We know that our God is good. He is a good God, and I know my future is going to be good because I serve a good God. So our future is good, and it's going to be glorious. We're going to cross over into the greatest degree of glory, and we're going to see um, the kingdom of God advance in this hour. You know, it's, it's so big. It's so glorious. It's so awesome. And he's saying, come on over, come on over, cross over. We're going over. So I want to say this. Can I, you know, in your living rooms where you are right now, can you stand wherever you are and just come stand in front of your TV if you can, if it's possible, and just say these words. I am crossing over in Jesus' name. Beautiful. Take a a faith step. Say, and I'm never going back. Never going back. Good job. Man, I believe if you believe that, man, we're going to cross over. We're not going to go back. We're going to go into what God has for us. There is no turning back. We're going to go forward. We're going to see God in these days, going to see His glory revealed on the earth. And we as as the church leadership, we cheer you on. And we are standing with you in everything that you need in your life and everything that God has for you. And you're going to see the goodness of God in your life, in Jesus' name. And just as we close here, I just want to give an opportunity today. Say you've tuned in and you've come across um, this service today and you've never been to see a service or you've never been to church, you've never seen a service online. I want to give you an opportunity right now to meet this great God, this one who took the children of Israel after 40 years, 400 years of slavery, took them out of Egypt took them, parted the waters and crossed uh, onto the other side. And you're hearing this message to say it, it means something to you, but you're not sure what. I mean, God is touching your heart and your life right now. He wants you to know Him. He wants you to come into a relation. He wants you to partner with Him to see the goodness of God, that heaven would come on earth. I want to lead you in a prayer. And if you would pray these words after me, I'd like to lead you in this prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I thank you that you died for me and that you shed your blood for me for the forgiveness of my sin. I ask you to come into my life, to be my God, to be my Lord, to be my Saviour. Lord, I ask you to touch me, heal me,
and save me. In Jesus' name, amen. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. Wonderful. Look, I hope that you really prayed that prayer and joined Ron in that. Amen. There's nothing more exciting than someone giving their life to Jesus. Did you know that when someone gives their life to Jesus, in heaven there's a huge party? Party going on. Because God is so glad that you, his precious child, has come home. Yay, what a wonderful celebration. Amen. And and so, Ron, you've got some words of knowledge, things that the Lord's been telling you as well that we want to pray for. Yeah, I've been, yeah, as I was praying, I was asking the Lord and Mm -hmm. He's saying that uh, He's wanting to, particularly like uh, terminal illnesses, sicknesses, diseases. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's wanting to touch people with cancer uh, and He's wanting to touch people with diabetes. So uh, if you've got that today, stretch your hands towards the screen. We want to pray and believe with you. You know, with God, all things are possible. Amen. Nothing is impossible with God. So. We want to pray today. It doesn't matter how hard it is. It's all easy for God. So we're going to pray and believe for you today. So stretch Amen. your hand out. Everyone Amen. else praying, you, let's Lord. pray. Father, Jesus, we thank you in Jesus today, name. God, for your he- miracle healing power, God, that is so real and so evident. God, I've seen you do such amazing things. And so, Lord, right here in this moment, God, I just thank you for touching those with cancer. Yes, God, Jesus. just uh, taking out all, all yes, that Lord. cancer, God, just lifting it off them. In Jesus' name, God, setting them free and healing them. Yes, completely, Jesus. Completely in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Father, for those with diabetes, God, I thank you, God, for touching them. Yes, Lord. God, just Every putting source. all the chemical balance yes, right. God, everything just being right and being completely whole in Jesus' mighty name. We give you thanks, Lord, and we give you praise because you do all things well. And God, and we just thank you that for the price that you paid for our healing. It's paid in full. It's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We agree together. We're looking forward to hearing your good stories about yeah, let all us of know that. What yeah. God's doing. What a great word, Ron. Crossing we're over. Crossing over. And God's really taking us on a, a journey. It's our season. Yeah, it is our season. He's mm-hmm. taking us from what we used to be. We talked about that at Easter, you know, that we've, you know, in that Passover, He's taking us into the whole new season yeah, whole and new purpose season. that He has. Whole new season. So a it's great be word. So I was different. encouraged. Yeah. Very encouraged and excited oh, good. for what God's doing. He's is the purpose in it. Yeah. He right. has a plan that's way He's bigger than anything. The devil purpose. might have meant it for evil. God but God's good. turned it around yeah, for good. That's right. Good news. Great message and excited about that. Hey, I also want to say next Sunday, girls, are you excited? You girls, it's Mother's Day next next Sunday. Now we can't all come together and have the boys put their suits on oh, and walk so us down good. the red that's carpet. So, that's such a good that's event. very yeah. sad yeah, that's that we can't sad. do that. Mm. But anyway, we've got a couple of little surprises and Rachel and I are going to be leading the service next week and yep. I know that you're going to be very blessed by that. It's going to be a great A service. bit of a girl's day, but mm. the boys are going to be blessed as well. Absolutely, boys. So 
Girls get excited. Let all your girlfriends know. Why don't you send them the link and say, hey, it's Mother's Day. Let's celebrate together. If you're on your own, let's come and join and be part of the Mother's Day service. Just wanted to remind you right now as we as we go out of this service that Ron and I are standing by at 11 o'clock for a Zoom call. We'd love to get to know you. And do you know what? If you find a Zoom call a little confronting, why don't you pop us an email? We'd love to meet you by email if a call with us is a bit scary. We're not that scary, are we, Ron? Uh, not last time I looked. But no, you know, we're not too know. scary, but we'd no, love to see you. We'd love to see you uh, join our Zoom call. Otherwise, email us. That would be absolutely amazing. Drop us an email. And so you're going to pray for us, Ron, that we have a good week in Jesus' name. Yep, want to pray? Yes, um, Lord. Uh, let's just join together. Let's pray. Yes, Lord. Father, Hallelujah. we do thank you for yes, your amazing Jesus. love and your amazing yes, grace. Lord. Lord. We just pray yes, uh, Lord. over each and every one. We pray your blessing, God, yes, into this Jesus. week, God, that, that you go ahead of us, you go before us and prepare the way. Lord, we thank you for yes, your provision. Jesus. We thank you, thank you for your life, your joy, yes, your Lord. peace, God, as yes, we go Father. through this difficult time in the world. God, we thank you that you're leading us in this amazing season, God. You're taking us into a crossing over period, God, where we're going to experience, God, such blessing like we've never gone this way before. It's going to be all new. It's going to be yes, so amazing. Jesus. God, we want to walk in everything that you have for us. So, God, we pray your blessing over our family and those, God, who have tuned in today. God, we just pray your favour and blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Everyone said, Amen. 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 We love you. Love you guys. God bless you. Bless you. We love you. See you Wednesday See you Wednesday. Night. Love to see you Wednesday night and we can just share a whole lot more. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you Stay guys. Stay safe. We believe in you. You're born to make a difference. God bless. I close my eyes and colors fly. There's no hiding from your grace. I can't deny your heart for mine. And it's unrelenting chase. Deception caught up in my own hesitations until your love took over me.